The pace of technological change is accelerating due to digitalization and frontier technologies such as artificial intelligence, blockchain, robotics, and nanotechnology. UNTAD's Technology and Innovation Report 2021 warns that emerging technologies can have severe downsides if they outpace a society's ability to adapt. The report provides a country readiness index that assesses the ability of countries to take advantage of frontier technologies. It finds that the countries least prepared are in sub-Saharan Africa and other developing regions, but the index spotlights some developing countries performing better on frontier technologies than their per capita GDPs would suggest. Today we're discussing UNTAD's new index with Clovis Freire, an economist with the organization and the lead author of the report. Clovis, thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Clovis, could you walk us through the index and why UNTAD decided to include it in this year's Technology and Innovation Report? Uh, sure. Um, I'll be pleased to, to walk through that. The, as you mentioned, the technology front, uh, Frontier Technology Readiness Index is an important contribution of this Technology Innovation Report 2021. And to give a bit more of context, let me first highlight some of the new analysis of the report. Um, the topic of the report is the effect of frontier technologies on inequalities. And this report is different from other reports because the focus is on developing countries, while many other reports tend to focus on the impact on developed countries. The Technology Innovation Report provides a comprehensive picture of the status and trend of 11 frontier technologies. These are artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, big data, blockchain, 5G, 3D printing, robotics, drones, gene editing, nanotechnology, and solar energy. This comprehensive picture includes things like market size, employment, and main sectors while other reports tend to focus on one or few of these technologies and do not cover such a wide range of indicators. It's also very important to highlight that uh, the report argues um, and, and presents different effects of the two waves of technological change, the digitalization that is at its peak now and frontier technology such as AI, which is at its beginning. This implies that there is now a window of opportunity for countries to catch up. The report also highlights that while very few countries create the technology that drive this technological change, our countries will be affected by it. And there are two sides of this effect. On one hand, in countries in which uh, their people and firms are more likely to use these frontier technologies, there are concerns related to the impact of new technologies on jobs, such as the impact of AI, robots, and automation, or concerns uh, with job polarization, which is the expansion of high and low wage jobs and the contraction of middle wage jobs. On the other hand, in countries that are less ready to adopt these technologies, the risk is that the technological gap uh, to countries that are more technologically advanced will increase. That will make more difficult for the countries that are less technologically advanced to participate in international market, to diversify their economies, to promote the structural transformation that is required for sustainable development and so on. So that was the reason for the creation of the Frontier Technology Readiness Index to inform countries where they are in relation to these two scenarios. Um, this index gives us a picture of national capabilities to equitably use, adopt, and adapt frontier technologies. And why was it important to highlight the countries that are performing better than expected? Well. In general, the economies most ready to the equitable deployment of frontier technologies are in North America and Europe. Uh, the top 10 countries are the United States, Switzerland, United Kingdom, Sweden, Singapore, Netherlands, the Republic of Korea, Ireland, Germany, and Denmark. And we also see that emerging economies also have higher positions in the ranking. China ranked 25, Russia 27, Brazil 41, India 43, South Africa 54, and this is out of the 158 countries covered in the index. 
But most of the countries that are least ready for uh, the adoption of these frontier technologies are in sub-Saharan Africa. But there are clearly many outliers, countries that perform better than their per capita GDP would suggest. And the report highlights these countries and how they outperform. It is important to highlight these cases to identify what these countries have done differently to be able to outperform and to use that as an example and illustration to share these examples with other countries. And Clovis, you're talking about these outliers. Um, could you tell us who tops the list of these countries that are outperforming uh, what would be expected? Uh, the greatest outperformer is India. It, it ranks 65 positions higher than expected. Um, the India is followed by the Philippines, which ranks 57 positions higher. But there are other countries that also have ranked higher than expected. These are uh, Ukraine, Vietnam, China, Jordan, Brazil, Republic of Moldova, South Africa, and Tunisia. So you see that there are a mix of uh, lower uh, middle-income developing countries and higher um, middle-income developing countries. And what exactly do we mean when we say that these countries you just listed are outperforming on their frontier technology readiness? Uh, could you give us a few concrete examples? Sure. The index is constructed based on five building blocks. These are ICT deployment, uh, ICT skills, R&D activity, industry activity, and access to finance. These building blocks, similar to many socioeconomic indicators, are typically associated with GDP per capita. So the higher the GDP per capita, the better the score in these indicators. This is not a perfect association by no means. Uh, there is a lot of scope for policies, but it gives a good first approximation. First, for example, if you would try to guess how a country ranks based on this index, the income per capita would be a reasonable proxy for that. So countries that are ranked higher than would be expected considering only the income per capita are the outperformers. And to give us some examples, um, two of them at China and India, they outperform. And when we dig deeper uh, to see in which dimensions of the index they rank better than expected, we see that they do well for research and development, R&D reflecting a large pool of qualified and uh, highly skilled engineers, computer scientists, and comparatively lower wages. They also have large uh, local markets, which attract multinational enterprise investment and give them also uh, bargaining power to negotiate technology transfer. Other countries that are outperformers also have been more successful in diversifying their economies through innovation and industrial policies that include export promotion and industrial and technology parks. These have created opportunities for innovation and the deployment of new technologies. One example is Vietnam, another is the Philippines. Both have a high ranking for industry. This reflects um, high levels of FDI in high technology manufacturing, particularly electronics. In the case of the Philippines, multinational companies are attracted by the country's strong supply chains and the solid base of parts manufacturing. The Philippines also has pro-business policies along with a skilled, well-educated and English-speaking workforce and a network of industrial and economic zones. Thus, the country has a good base to deploy frontier technologies in the economy. So these are some of the examples of the outperformers. And you mentioned, Clovis, that it was important to um, highlight these outliers, these overperformers, um, so that other countries can, can learn from their experiences. What important lessons can other countries draw from these outliers? I would say that there are two key lessons one is that overall, even the top overperforming developing countries 
have lower rankings for digital connectivity and skills. There are exceptions such as Jordan. Uh, Jordan is a country that ranks 34 positions higher than expected given its GDP per capita. Again, this is reflecting a supportive government policy. Jordan was one of the first Arab countries to support ICT as a standalone economic sector and from 1999 had the first nationwide ICT strategy. It also has a young digitally literate population and high internet penetration. So it's a very particular case. But in general, low ICT access and digital skills are the common pattern that we see for developing countries as a group. And to give an idea, the average developed country ranks 23 in ICT infrastructure. If there was an average developed country, it was 23. But the average developing country would rank 101 out of 158 countries. So very far from the average of developed countries. Given that frontier technologies build on the current technological wave of digitalization, poor digital infrastructure and skills are a big handicap for developing countries to deploy frontier technologies equitably in their societies. So developing countries need to work to provide universal internet access and to ensure that all their people have opportunities to learn the skills to be more ready for frontier technologies. So this is the first big lesson. The second lesson, and I would say that is a key lesson, is that the countries that outperform have promoted and invested in innovation and technological learning through domestic R&D in targeted sectors. This finding has informed a key message of the report that the developing countries need to adopt frontier technologies while continue to diversify their production base by mastering existing technologies. They need to keep both targets at sight. This is critical because a country can catch up in the technological sense only if it can create its own path. That means that the country needs to have technological and innovation capacities to pursue new technological paths. So how they build these capacities and, and how can they identify and take advantage of the windows of opportunities, either the technological market or institutional change. They do that by diversifying their economies towards new, more complex products and by mastery existing technologies. So there is this double track that developing countries should follow, and we see that in the countries that outperform. This requires a difficult balancing act for policymakers, it, tailored to countries' development and technological conditions. This will mean strengthening innovation systems while aligning science, technology, innovation policies and industrial policies, while building basic digital skills and closing the gaps in digital infrastructure. Let me give you some examples of that. So let's take, for instance, China. China's catch up in technological development is an important example. The country has diversified its economy and mastered most traditional technologies while also investing in innovation in target sectors such as mobile and digital technology. Chinese companies now play an active role in technology such as 5G, drones, solar energy. Their digital platforms and ecosystem have pushed development in AI, blockchain and other frontier technologies. Together with the United States, China is a major player in both publications and patents of frontier technologies. They together hold uh, about 30 to 6 percent of uh, shares in each of uh, the 11 technological fields considered in the report to give uh, an idea. So China only does not rank higher in the frontier technology readiness index because the index also considers the equitable use and adoption of this technology and lower levels of internet access and digital skills in China when we compare with our developed countries, they show a reduced likelihood of the equitable de deployment of this technology in the short run. 
and that pushed China's ranking down to 25. But the country is also moving fast in addressing these deficiencies. So this example shows uh, the importance also of the role of government as the investor of first resort in promoting diversification and innovation. Of course, one can say that China enjoys advantage due to the sheer size of its domestic market, its geopolitical weight, and, and so one can argue that it would be difficult for other countries to replicate that. But while this is true, the point is that the process of catching up is the same as that followed by other countries before, such as, for example, the Republic of Korea, which now ranks seven in the Frontier Technology Readiness Index. And... Uh, has a technology advanced economy, but it started in 1950s with low technological levels in agriculture and low skilled manufacturing. Uh, the country moved up in the technological terms uh, by diversifying its economy and with the coordinated action of government and big business. And uh, some of these groups uh, have over time become well-known brands in the global market. So to catch up, that strategy was complemented also in the case of the Republic of Korea by target promotion of innovation in frontier and new technologies in the 1970s, 80s and 90s in industries such as auto industry, cell phones and, and memory chips. Another example, a more recent example in the same line is Vietnam. Vietnam ranks 45 positions higher than expected given its GDP per capita in the Frontier Technology Readiness Index. This reflects the country's successful industrialization and in, in also increasing technological and productive capacities. This was done through target industrial and export-led growth policies, promotion of mix of FDI, import substitution measures, and export subsidies. As highlighted in the Technology Innovation Report, between 2005 and 2018, to give an example, in Vietnam, the proportion of exports of primary and resource-based goods fell from 52% to 22%, while the export of the high-tech goods increased from 6 to 35%. So the Frontier Technology Readiness Index, it capture, captures not only this high level of high-tech manufacturing, but also of digitally deliverable um, services um, covering things like finance and ICT, which tends to interact with other technologies. So this indicates a more prepared economy to use, adopt, and adapt Frontier Technologies. The combination of this strategy of promoting innovation in frontier technologies and diversification towards more complex products will serve developing countries in their efforts to catch up. So let me conclude with the following key three points of the report. First, developing countries, particularly low-income countries, cannot afford to miss this new wave of technological change. Second, this requires a balanced approach, building a robust industrial base and promoting frontier technology that can help deliver the 2030 agenda. And third, each country will need science, technology and innovation policies appropriate to their stage of development to prepare their people, their firms for a period of rapid change. And the Frontier Technology Readiness Index which we hope now uh, will become a feature of the Technology Innovation Report. This index will help developing countries to identify areas for policy action to fast track the equitable deployment of frontier technologies and help these countries to catch up and take advantage of new technological waves. That was Clovis Freire. A new TED economist, and he was walking us through the organization's new Frontier Technology Country Readiness Index.